welcome to the fifth lecture losses associated with microwave transmission. As we said that till now we have done with only lossless um, assumption, but now any finite conductivity or departure from the ideal case that will give loss. So, how to tackle that loss, how to quantify that loss that will be discussed in this lecture. Practical transmission structures are lossy, microwave power transports through we have seen coaxial cables, metallic wave guides, optical fibers, micro strip lines, etcetera. These transmission structures are made of either conductors or dielectrics or mixture of both. Like coaxial cable, you can have the two conductors that means metals or conductors and then there are air which is nothing but inside between the two conductors that is dielectric. Also there are sometimes very precise coaxial cables they are made with very uh, a thing uh, dielectric cables. So, that is why uh, is sometimes both an ideal conductor has infinite conductivity so lossless, an ideal dielectric has zero conductivity so lossless, but a practical conductor has finite conductivity, a practical dielectric has finite conductivity. At microwave frequency obviously, we choose transmission structures which have small loss, but now you see that day by day technology moves with higher frequency. All the applications like in earlier days satellite communication they were using some 4 and 6 gigahertz, but nowadays then after that they went to since the space becomes full they go to K U band which is 18 gigahertz, 16, 14 and 16 gigahertz they used to use. Then they went to know still the thing got filled. So, they went to bands where car band hmm, which is 20 gigahertz, 30 gigahertz. Now, they are going to higher up W band itself. So, as frequency is more you require these uh, transmission structures and at higher and higher frequency then again which was quite easily used in lower frequency. Now, at higher frequency if you go the loss increases because we have seen that all or we will see that all these things are depends on frequency. So, at microwave frequency you need to choose the transmission structure which is give you very small loss because microwave power etcetera those are very costly. So, you cannot afford to lose that power due to the loss. So, you need some mechanism to characterize or find out what is the loss and you see that our model that we have developed that we will we can find out fields in the um, any any uh, microwave transmission structure or in free space when microwave transmission is taking place we know because they will be all, all the signals they will be sum up either this TMT or TM modes. So, we know the field structure. So, from field structure how we can find these losses that we will try to find here. And electromagnetic waves in a lossy medium has non-zero attenuation constant because we know that generally we call any plane wave or a, sorry any wave when it goes it has a variation called sorry e to the power minus gamma z. If it is moving in plus z direction, so we can write minus plus direction. Now, this gamma it is actually is alpha plus j beta gamma is a complex quantity. Now, for lossless case we know this alpha is called attenuation constant beta is phase constant this is attenuation constant this is phase constant. These are all your EM theory class you have seen and this is called propagation constant. Today we have seen propagation vector k 
this is propagation constant gamma. Now, in lossless case this alpha is 0. So, j beta that is why this you see in all our cases we have taken the field variation as by z variation of the wave the minus j beta z. We have not anywhere taken gamma, but if loss is present then we have attenuation constant. Now, this attenuation constant for conductors we call that attenuation constant is alpha c and for dielectrics we call that alpha d. Now, total loss in a transmission structure is sum of conductor loss power loss. So, conduct power loss in conductor plus power loss in dielectric. So, attenuation constant also it is sum of two attenuation constants one is alpha d another is alpha c for lossy structure propagation constant becomes complex that we have already seen. Now, in transmission line theory we have learnt how to model um, a lossless line a lossless line is in a transmission line theory that means where T m wave will propagate it is not valid for non T m waves, but there we have seen that uh, you can have um, two distributed power unit parameters L and C or you can say small L and C that means some inductance per A. So, you know that how to what is the transmission line model of that. Now, there a lossy line is modeled by four distributed per link parameter that means two more in addition to L and C you require those are R and G okay? and G is in shunt R is in series with L. So, L and R together and G and C together in the shunt path. So, propagation constant gamma of a lossy line will become like this, this you also you have seen in your transmission line classes that r plus g omega also like that if you do it becomes this. Now, for a low loss line because we will have to use it. So, in our use it will be low loss line means small conductor loss even at the highest frequency. So, omega if you take for highest frequency r will be much smaller than omega l that condition you will have to satisfy for a low loss line otherwise it cannot be used. Similarly, uh, small dielectric loss even at the highest frequency. So, g should be much lower than omega c to be usable that is why we will see that this coaxial lines they have when we will discuss connectors etcetera that the various coaxial lines they have certain frequency range. Above that this equation uh, these approximations does not hold good. So, we say that no no loss is too much do not use that line, but up to the usable frequency this approximation should will have to apply that loss is small compared to the actual work actual work of the thing is or impedance should be omega l. So, we say that okay, r should be much less than omega l g should be much less than omega c. So, r g is how much this. So, putting that you see that the propagation constant becomes this. Now, this if we remember this gamma because of the loss since we are assuming loss. So, this number now what is alpha? Alpha is the real part of this complex number. So, you see that here you will get a real part because this j and this j. So, they will give you a thing. So, this part is the loss. So, that you can find out that alpha from that equation this is the loss. So, that is nothing but half r by z naught plus this. So, by this you can find that means, if you know the R L G C parameter, if you know the R L G C parameter of the transmission line then simply you can find the attenuation constant of that. Also you see that characteristic impedance of a line 
is almost identical to a lossless line. So, this is an important part the second bullet it says that attenuation ok lossy line have an attenuation constant, but the impedance does not depend much on low loss lossy line. So, impedance is almost same that is why you see that with these approximations you can show that lossless case we know this is the characteristic impedance in a lossy case also it is same. Another fundamental quantity phase constant also same as lossless case and given by these. So, you see L c that does not uh, change with a. So, beta is also where, where from beta comes remember where from alpha came beta also came from the same source that gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta. So, this part that means the imaginary part is the beta phase constant. So, this beta etcetera they determine again the the impedance etcetera. So, phase constant also in the lossless case and lossy case are same characteristic impedance same attenuation constant you can find. So, this is an easier route if you know R L G C, but always this R L G C are not known distributed parameters are not always known. So, you need to find out a way. So, you see this this was good if you know this R L G C you do this because this did did not need any calculation of the fields, but if it is not known then we as an engineer should be able to still calculate the attenuation from the field equation because we know at least the fields. Now, that technique is called perturbation technique. So, let us see that loss evaluation. Now, basic assumption of perturbation means from the whatever we have seen we can guess that fields of a lossy line are not much different from a lossless line. Why? Because you see we have seen the fundamental parameters are not changing much. Also we know that our main thing is the propagation of wave. So, loss will have to keep bare minimum also at such high frequency you see that impedance etcetera they are so high that to have some loss r g etcetera that will always be less because our frequency is very high that is why in microwave itself the frequent loss is quite small compared to other low things, but still since very precisely if we want to see there are losses, but one thing we can say that the field is not much different and people have experimented and found that the fields they do not change much with loss only some energy goes. Now, with this assumption if we proceed we can calculate very accurately the what is the loss that is taking place. Now, so for a matched line impedance match line in transmission line classes you have learned that power flow along the line is given by P z power flow that E cross H star dot d s integration surface integration that is the power flow that has a z variation and if a, at z is equal to 0 the power is p naught then we have seen that it is ex decays exponentially with distance power flow and that is e to the power minus 2 a z up to alpha z alpha is the attenuation constant. Also that was power flow in a lossless line match lossless line. Now, we say that power loss in a lossy line per unit length let us call it P L and obviously, it should be defined as this del P by del Z that is the loss del P by del Z. So, this P L this P L power loss that is why we are not using any L subscript here. This P z is the power flow, this is the power loss del P del z and this minus sign is chosen because you see that 
when we will take this, this minus will come we, because with this positive distance the power falls away obviously, because some loss is taking place. So, that is why this is minus and this P L accounts for total loss that means, contributed by both conductor and dielectric. So, later this P L will say that P L will be sum of P L C conductor power loss plus P L D the dielectric power loss. Okay. So, now with this so, let us put this, this del p del z. So, if we do that, we get the alpha. So, alpha is nothing but p alpha is nothing but p l z by 2 p z. Now, you see p l z is p l z is equal to 0 by p z that is. So, this ratio we are taking specializing at z is equal to 0. So, p l z 0 and p z z 0 already is 2 p 0 and p l again we are breaking into p l c plus p l d. So, if we can find the expression from of this p l c, p l d and p 0 from the knowledge of our fields of the lossless line, then alpha we can accurately calculate. This is according to perturbation theory which says the fields does not change. So, since we have already evaluated fields, we can find out P naught, P L C and P L D and then put in this equation that will give us alpha. That will be characterization of loss that is this done. So, power flowing in the lossless line at z is equal to 0 is given by the pointing vector and then surface integration as I said. Now, also there is a this is pointing this is pointing vector. Now, in E m theory there is a pointing theorem. I do not know how many of you know that, but it is uh, actually we have given the derivation of pointing theorem also from Maxwell's equation in our notes. It is for your reference we will not test you on that we do not uh, expect that you should know pointing theorem, but if any later time you can refer it here. But from that pointing theorem of E m theory, we will put it into notes from that you can see that we have shown that conductor loss can is nothing but this expression that this conductivity as we are saying the culprit for loss and then electric field phasor is square that should be volume integrated. That means, over the volume the loss is taking place, if there is an electric field over the volume that is, that can be found as conductor loss. Similarly, dielectric loss is you see the this is the, the imaginary part of the complex dielectric constant. Actually, this imaginary part of the complex dielectric constant that contains this culprit conductivity, hmm, because he gives rise to this. So, omega into this and then sigma. So, dielectric loss is given by this and if we can evaluate this, we will do. Now, it is easily said then we can find out alpha. So, we will do this that once we know the fields of any structure, we will find the pointing vector, then we will take the surface integration of that with the one cross section surface and then take the real part of that and for time harmonic field this is this half comes because of time harmonic cosine shuttle variation. So, that P naught will be evaluating conductor loss you see all these cases we are getting a half this half physically is coming because of our time harmonic field variation that means, time variation is half. So, over power is a integration over time. So, that cosine always gives you over a time period it gives you half that is why all these are half and all these you see here we from electric field we can find the P L C 
but this electric field remember it should be inside conductor. Now, tell me and conductor generally we know that it does not have any electric field, but if there is a finite conductivity that electric field it percolates to a particular depth that is called skin depth. There, there is a field that field is called diffusion field in EM theory we have come across that. So, while evaluating this we need to find out this is not the field between the two conductors etcetera, between the two or one conductor that means in the dielectric not the field. It is the field that is going inside the conductor that is creating the heating and that is producing the loss. So, this field is the diffusion field, because up to skin depth only lower also it is there, but we approximate that it has died down to 1 by E up to skin depth. That is why while evaluating these, this is a tough job, you will have to find the diffusion field starting from the exact field distribution there, you will have to find what is the diffusion field and find this loss. Now, this loss finding is easy, because this exists in the between the two conductors on the dielectric or if there is the whole structure is dielectric. Now, through its volume the field is known. So, you need to volume integrate that and find out this field. So, and then this when you have a material dielectric you know it is epsilon double prime which is nothing but coming from tan delta specification or loss tangent. You know loss tangent is nothing but the that means tan delta is nothing but epsilon double prime by epsilon prime. And so, that means you know epsilon double prime, omega is known, sigma is known, then you can find E square. So, we will see this example in a tutorial class in the uh, I think in 10th lecture we will try to do that. There will we'll have a tutorial where we will solve this problem for a quacks that how to find this alpha, because this is an important thing and we will see based on that various when you use coaxial conductors you need to um, buy uh, or use which conductor you will use. So, there will be various um, actually as higher and higher frequency needs to be supported by a coaxial line. Nowadays, you see we need to see various high frequencies through coaxial cables. Even suppose I want to see a pulse, which is having a rise time of um, uh, nowadays people are doing 20, 30 picosecond. Now, 20, 30 picosecond means you know that it will have a very high frequency component. So, I need to pass and see it in oscilloscope. So, oscilloscope cable should be like that. So, that now we will have to find that at such high frequency that gigahertz several gigahertz 30, 40 gigahertz frequency what cable will use what will be its loss. So, I need to characterize that. So, that unless and until we I solve this case for a coaxial line I cannot evaluate this loss. Based on that people are coming out with newer and newer coaxial cables which are going even nowadays the most modern coaxial cables are going up to 110 gigahertz. So, we will see that 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 is an interesting story that though we are saying that loss is small though we are having perturbation theory, but that loss is not very small. So, at higher frequency if I go higher and higher frequency you have substantial loss. So, that the cable cannot be used. So, that is why people are bringing more sophisticated things. So, that is the importance of these designs and these formulas. Otherwise, these formulas mostly you do not know, but an engineer should know, because he when today's technology will move to 110 gigahertz technology, he should know what is the how to design a coaxial cable, so that I can put power loss even to this bare minimum what will be the attenuation constant for that, what field structure I will choose. So, all this will help him there. That is why that this power calculation fields, once you know this you can put it into that uh, 
this equation and this will be your thing. So, we will calculate that PLC, PLD, etcetera, and then we will see what are the various connectors, etcetera, that we will be using. Okay, thank you.